Okay. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, yeah, welcome to this office hour. I think the seventh or something. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, today I'll be focusing on visualizations. Um, we briefly touched upon those yesterday, um, but I think I can drive some points home and I'll actually... Um, what I think I'll do, because um, when I browse Dune, I always like, I see great queries and then I'm like, oh man, like this visualization could really be improved. So um, I just found a pretty good example of that yesterday and we'll just um, basically look at the mistakes of others. Um, like mistakes is like, it's not really mistakes, but it's like things that could be improved. So um, we're just going to be doing that for a while. And um, if we find the time, um, we'll like um, try try to find some quick wins in, in actually finding the right tables to, to work with. But uh, first of all, let's try to get into uh, visualizations. So what I did yesterday, um, there's like talks about uh, MetaMask swaps, uh, MetaMask um, airdrop. And to qualify for the MetaMask airdrop, you actually have to uh, commit a swap on the MetaMask uh, wallet. So in your MetaMask, there's like a native swap function. Um, if you really want to swap something, don't use it because it's taxing the fuck out of you. Um, it's a really high swap fee, I think like 0.8% or something. So like a really high uh, swap fee. Um, but everybody uses it regardless because it's very easy to access. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's like, it's it's really easy to use. Like, I, I think that's why, that's why so many people are using it. Um, so what I did then is like I um, I pulled up a dashboard and I was like, hey, like this is actually cool data. But then it's like if you start, oh, I should start. Uh, I should uh, share my screen. Uh, that's a common issue here. I see. <laughs> uh, let's share the screen. Um, so yeah, everybody can see my screen, I guess. Um, so I'll just uh, zoom in a bit because this is actually like we'll we'll focus on like uh, little things, but the little things can really be big things. So if we go into this chart, um, we can actually like we can see like the the volume is two hundred million. Right. Uh, can now see your screen. Oh, you cannot see my screen. I can see it. Can everybody? Um, Zale, you might have to expand it. It shows up as like a really small square. Yeah, you can like there. There's like you can pretty much see everyone, and then you should see my camera somewhere, and then my screen like next to that, and then you can, I don't know, Discord layout layout stuff. Um, yeah, I'll 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 just continue for now. So basically, what we have here is like um we can see this chart, and then it's like uh first of all like what immediately comes to mind is like hey like we actually don't have like a x axis like uh, written description, and we don't have like what is this like is this two hundred million like potatoes. Of course, like this is this is what the math teachers always did to you in uh, in high school, I guess. Um, but it, it actually like on this chart, it's like it's quite like intuitive to figure out. Um, but but we can really improve this. So let's just take this query, and we will just fork it. And then because we don't need our data set schema, we can just pull that to the side, and I'll just zoom out a bit. And then we see like this, this query is actually pretty simple. Um, it's just like uh, all the trades that, um, that interact with the MetaMask swap router. And uh, that's, that's this address. But uh, we won't focus on the, on the query too much for now, but rather uh, I want to go into the visualization. And what really annoys me here as well is that like, if you, um, if you actually hover over this and you see the, I don't know, I think you'd call it tooltip, so the little thing that that opens um, if you if you hover over here. So if I want to check like, hey, what was the um, value on this day? It's like the number is really unreadable. Like this is two point five seven million, but there's like four places of decimal. So it's like, why the fuck would you show like with a number that big? Like I don't need to know that like point three nine cents or like thirty nine cents have also been traded on that day. It's like the information is really like. 275 million have been traded. And in order to change that, I can pretty much like, can go down here and then, um, so maybe we can actually, I, I will just construct a new visualization because um, then it's easier to go through this flow. Um, so we, 
we select our accessories, so that's date trunk in this in this case. Um, ideally, I would also call this days. Uh, so let's just do this real quick. And we we have uh, date trunk and sum here. And what I would do for sum is also like I would I would call it uh, uh, US dollar amount. Or maybe we could actually um, find the right description for this, and this is like daily volume. So uh, let's do it like this. Hopefully, this query this query could run for a little while. Hmm. I did not think this through. I guess thirty seconds or something should be fine. Um, but it is querying all of text or trades. Hmm. Maybe we can. Um... Oh, there it is actually. Wow, twenty-two seconds. Um, that's that's really cool. Um, so um, we will select day, and then we will select daily volume. And already, like you can see, like hey, like this is the daily volume, and not, and not like on in the old version it was sum. So it's like wh what the fuck is sum? And like now, now we have daily volume, so that's already like it, 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 it is quite an improvement, I'd say. And then what we can also do, um, the, the access titles have already um, um, they, they are already like nicely formatted by themselves. Um, that's uh, our, our UI engine, or yeah, our, our like chair query visualization engine does that automatically. Um, but these uh, tooltips, so, so the stuff that opens here, that you kind of need to format yourself. So what you can do here, uh, on the x-axis, I'm actually like, this is totally reasonable. Like, how else would you display dates? So uh, x-axis is fine, but on the y-axis, um, we have this problem of like, hey, like, what the hell is actually happening here? And um, so what these are is like, um, this tooltip that I'm talking about is called a label in this, in this thing. So just um, so you can see the difference, right now it's like a pretty unreadable number. And then we can basically put in, put in uh, 0, 0 0.0 here. And then we're already like at like, now it's only showing one decimal. And then if, like, if I like increase the number of zeros here, uh, we'll get more decimals. But actually, I don't want decimals at all. So what I can do is like I can put a comma. And then we already like, I don't know what the correct English terminology for this is, but basically now the number is like clearly identifiable as a, as a, like you can, you can very easily see how many numbers there is. Like how long is this? Like how big is this number? Because there's a comma separated uh, values. So we can also combine those two. So if you do uh, zero comma zero and then dot zero zero, um, we can get the, comma separation and the and decimal values. Um, but what I instead would want is um, I can just do 0a and then I actually just have um, 51 million. And that's, that's, like, that's what I want in this chart. Like the numbers are that big that it's like, I don't even care about like, I could do 0, 0.0 and then I'd have um, 107.3 uh, million. Um, this actually make like I, I think that's probably the most common thing that you can use, um, or the, the the most common like I don't know. It, this seems to make the most sen sense in, in in most cases. Um, and we could actually leave it like this because it's like yeah, five hundred thousand in volume is actually quite significant. And maybe we can find an example where yeah. So uh, it even goes down to uh, k. So. Uh, thousands and millions just get displayed as uh, K or M. And that's really like, it's a way better way to, um, for, for your mind basically to understand these numbers quicker. So it's like, if we, if we change the spec again, like we can, we can just go to zero again. It's like, there, there's this really like indescriptive number. And then if we, if we enter 0.a, I don't actually know why it's A. But uh, yeah, if you, if you put an A in here, um, it will, why is it why is it an A? I don't know. Maybe approximation. That that could be like maybe you can construct that as a mental bridge in your head. Um because it's like it's it's shortening the number and it just makes it easier to understand. Um so yeah, I think for here we'll go with zero zero dot zero A. Um and then we already have a chart that's uh, way more readable. And then 
what we could also do is like um we could obviously call this date and we could call this um uh volume in uh yos dollar um but what we can also do so uh just just so that you can see um i would actually not put this date um x-axis thing in here because it's like it actually just adds like it adds it clutters the chart and it's like you want your chart to contain the information that you really need but you don't want it to contain anything more so it's like this obviously is a date um but on here like you you can argue that this this actually is, uh, is a useful thing to add um but what we could do instead as well is instead of writing volume in us dollar here uh, we also have a tick format so the tick format is basically um these are the ticks of the visualization and what we can do with our ticks is also uh we can just um so first of all we can we can again 0, 0.0 a then we have um then we have this um but in, in, in this case, actually, this, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And uh, in most cases, actually, the tick format is best when chosen automatically because you can't... Oh, uh, not, not like this, actually. Um, yeah, it, it is best chosen automatically. But what you can do is you can add a dollar symbol in front and then you actually have to, uh, have to change this. So in this case, uh, I don't need to know that it's 100.0 uh, million. Because it's like, if there would be like more lines here, then it would actually make sense. But because we only have 100 million, 200 million, uh, there's, there's no reason for us to display 100.0. So it's like, we'll, we'll just do uh, 0a, and then we have 100 million. And because we, 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 we put dollar symbol in here, we don't even need the description of, uh, of what like volume in US dollar. Um, that might make a lot of sense for, for other charts though. Uh, we'll, we'll go into that in a second. I have another dashboard where, where that is relevant. And that's basically the, the, the whole spiel here. Like, um, in that way, like, um, if, we go from, if we go from this chart, it's like 100 million. I don't know what this is. Um, there's a sum value, like what the fuck is happening? If I, if I hover, over, uh, hover over this, like the labels will be like, I don't know what's happening here. How much volume is this? And then if we go into my visualization, you can clearly see like, hey, like this is 156.1 uh, million uh, volume. And it is uh, clearly, it is US dollar uh, volume. Actually, we, we could still write that under, I, I, I guess, like uh, just, just to really bring the point home. Um, but yeah, you, you, can, you, can, you can see how, how that really uh, impacts the readability and like the like the speed in which you can, you can basically understand the charts that, that you guys are producing with these queries. And uh, mm -hmm. I actually think that's a really like, that's not a thing that people on Dune focus too much on. And, uh, but it really helps in like um, getting your dashboard off the ground and like um, effectively communicating the data. Because it's like all, all we're doing here, like all the data is publicly available, we are aggregating them, but then you actually need to communicate them nicely. And that's really, um, I, I think that's a really valuable skill and um, something, something you guys should really focus on and like, um, I don't know, ask for feedback from your peers, uh, ask, ask me or Andrew like, hey, like what can I improve in this dashboard? And we can probably uh, give, you, give you some good feedback about that because it's like, um, you can aggregate and, and visualize all the data in the world if, if whoever like, is your audience for that dashboard isn't able to understand what, what you're trying to communicate, then it's like it's all worthless, then all, all your work has been for nothing. Um, so, so really, really um, try to yeah, internalize that, remember that, and, and really, really um, spend some time on actually like, designing your dashboards or, or like, we are still like, on the visualization level. Um, so yeah, that's basically um, that's basically it for this chart. Is there questions at this point? Yes, one question. Um, how would you instead of millions um, list thousands? So with another letter, maybe in the tick format. I see. I don't think that's possible, actually. I think it automatically switches to. Then other, maybe if we put K in here. Nope. I think it auto detects. Like if it's only in the thousand, then it only will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but maybe it would actually be interesting to have like a. Oh, you can put zero comma zero zero zero. I think. Yeah, but then it will just. A comma, comma instead of ah. decimal. I think. Nope. Try Still try a few more zeros. <laughs> <laughs> like three. Oh, three. <laughs> Nope. Hold on. I definitely, I definitely did this. No, no. You you can do zero comma zero zero, and then you'll basically wait. Oh, I I'm changing the wrong thing. Uh, my bad. Uh, I need to change the label format, not the tick format. Um. So if we delete the a, uh, we're back at this again, and then it's like zero comma zero, zero zero. No, it doesn't change if you put a comma. The comma seems to be like a boolean thing. Like if like you put either, yeah. three, put three, like put two more zeros and then another. Yeah, oh. look like nothing, nothing happens. Because I remember if you group by threes. Hold on. Um. Nope. With a with a comma, you seem to like uh, initiate this comma separation thing, and then with a with a dot, you just uh, pull decimals. So um, it's either either all or nothing. Yeah. So um, here I, I have it working. So zero comma zero 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 dot a. Wow. What? So, yeah, I'm learning something. Dot here. a. <laughs> uh, is that not working for you? Oh wait, that's oh that changes the tick format. Zero comma zero zero dot a. I've not seen dot a at all. Zero dot zero 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 a. Oh. Can you send me the example? That's so weird. Yeah, hold on. Maybe like does your chart have like millions in it? No, mine doesn't. Maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the thing. Like it just it just automatically scales. Like uh, like see like um down yeah, here yeah. we actually have like six hundred nine k, um and then like as soon as we hit a million, it, it it's just gonna abbreviate to a million. And actually like. There might be some use cases where it's useful to only have thousands and maybe we can like improve on that on, in, in a future version to like make this a bit more clear because it's like super opaque for now as well um but yeah i i, I don't really see that as a big issue um so yeah sorry not not possible <laughs> um yeah any any other questions around this otherwise i'll i'll move on and, and move a bit to uh, dashboard design, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so, um, this is a dashboard I constructed on NFTs. Um, so basically you can, have we covered parameters, Andrew? Um, no, I think we've shown them, but we haven't explained them. Yeah, okay. So I let's think go that, with no. Yeah, yeah. I, I, basically, you can input any uh, ERC721 address in here. Um, you can choose what uh, time frame you want to have displayed. Um, so, if we just. So, this goes from August 1st to November 7th. And if I just say I just want the last, let's say, one month, and I click on apply. Uh, the queries will basically rerun, and um, I will only have the the last month displayed. Um, so let's just hmm. busy database today. Yeah, there it is. Um, so yeah, then then it's like we like the last date we see is actually October thirteenth, which is uh, yeah pretty much a month ago. Um, yeah, so but but that's that's not what I want to focus on here. Uh, just just so you kind of explain uh, like understand this dashboard. It's like th there's like a few parameters in here. You can fully like change this to to any ERC seven twenty one. So any NFT collection basically. Um, you can have the data displayed in here. And then rolling trades is basically like, um, uh, it basically changes some of the things that get calculated in the dashboard. But that's really not what I, uh, what I want to focus on here. Or maybe actually, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it in a bit. So um, what I've done here 
It's like uh, I, I think this is a pretty good example of like how to design a to design a good dashboard and like how to have a good like flow of like uh, presenting information. Um, I, I, I'm sure it can be improved, and I'm not like fully finished. Like everything is always a work in progress. Um, but basically, because this is a like you can just put anything in here. Um, I've like. I've clearly like um, made the connection of like, hey, you input like a contract address, and then I will I will actually dis display you the project name because it's like uh, people might be unsure like, hey, is this actually the shit that I'm trying to query? So I'm like, yes, like this is this is the contract for the dudes. I've recognized that our database recognizes this. So then people are like, oh, okay, so nice. Like I actually have this. And then it's like, what do you want to know about the NFT collection? I don't know how deep you all went into the NFT rabbit hole, but I guess like you've at least kind of looked at what's what's happening across the NFT space, like uh, been on OpenSea like at least once. Um, so interesting information in the NFT space is always like uh, circulating supply. So how big is the collection? Here it's 512. Uh, how many owners actually own this? Then it's like 274. Um, how old is this collection? 110 days. Um, what's the current average price? Um, what's the current average price in dollar? Uh, because the NFT market is actually mostly uh, accounted for. Uh, I don't know. The information in the NFT market is probably like almost always in ETH. But it's also like it's kind of interesting to like translate this to US dollar. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, we have the uh, current average price in ETH and the market capitalization. So the, the market cap. Uh, of the NFT collection in ETH and in uh, US dollars. And I think um, these values, like you kind of have to read it like this. Um, so uh, prices are like denominated in ETH, but market caps are actually like, in order for your mind to make sense of this, um, it's actually more useful. Like if you'd only have like a market capitalization in ETH, like you would be like, I don't fucking know what that means. Like no, no, like, of course, like you can make the mental calculation in your head. Like one ETH is probably like I don't even know the price, like four thousand eight hundred something. Um, four thousand eight hundred times two hundred two thousand eight hundred twelve. It's like it's like of course you can do the math in your head, but it's like it's it, it just takes a while longer to calculate this in your head than just like seeing like hey this is actually like uh, nine nine <laughs> nine <laughs> nine point six million. Uh, um, and then you also have the total volume. And I think in, in, in that respect, like uh, in the NFT market, people focus on both like the total volume and uh, uh, in, in ETH and, uh, and in, in US dollars. Um, so yeah, so basically what I'm doing here is like, if you input like any uh, ERC721 contract address, and we'll do this in a second, but for now, I actually I just want to go through this and it might take a while until it's all updated. So I'm just going to do it with this example project. Um, so basically what I'm doing is like, I'm, I'm giving you like the baseline information. And then like, what, what are people most interested in? Then it's like, yeah, price data, probably price data. So like, as you can see, like I've, I've split the dashboard into, into like separate parts. I'm, I have like price data, I have volume data, and I have all the data. And then what I'm also doing is like, you, you see that I'm not utilizing the whole, the whole space here because it's like, the, the less the less like cluttered your screen is or the less like information is displayed at once on your screen the more like the more you can actually focus on the individual data points so i think that um i don't know it it, it really like it really helps me and it's like and there, there there probably some like scientific study of like you can take in like more information when there is not as much dis information displayed and it's like you want to guide your like your audience through this dashboard so like you you are always in control like what what you are actually displaying and if you just like drop a, a thousand fucking things on once on them it's like nobody's gonna like fucking understand what you're doing and like what I'm trying to do here is like I'm trying to like make a make a very clear path through this dashboard with like hey like now you're gonna like look at price data and then it's like um this is actually like oh, this is quite uh, complicated to explain now like this whole dashboard is like pretty like not not that easy to understand but basically what i'm doing here is like um the the charts that are displayed here so the sales in eth um they track the moving average price over the last rolling and then it's like n, n times two, and n times five trades. So you can choose your rolling n trades up here, so 50. And then we can basically like, we can look at the row, like now it's like n, n moving average is like the last 50 trades, n times two is the last 100 trades, and n times five is the last 250 trades. It's basically like 
usually in NFT markets, people look like at, at like the past seven days or the past like month. And I just think that's a, that's a very bad way of reporting things for like a number of reasons. Um, so basically I, I had to put this like explainer text in, into my dashboard of like, um, I hope people understand this. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm basically trying to do here. And like in a lot of cases on Dune, that's actually the case because people are like, of course that like they, they come to the data, but then it's like, what are they actually looking at? And that's what I'm trying to like, I wouldn't recommend like, actually like it's, it's a pretty bad practice to, to like have to explain something this explicitly. But because this dashboard dashboard is interactive, like I, I kind of have to explain it somewhere. So it's like this this is too much text for a dashboard. But it's like because this is an interactive dashboard, like I'm I'm kind of fine with it. Like in a in an ideal world, like I would find a way to like not have to um to automate this basically to like but like Dune Dune is limited in that regard. But whatever. Um but basically I'm I'm saying here like hey, this is what's actually displayed on these charts, and then we can just take a look at these charts. And what I'm doing then is like, you can see the sales in ETH. And here we actually have, so sales in ETH, what does that, what's that, what does that actually mean? And then we can see here the, those like little pink dots, um, that's the ETH amount. So that's individual sales on the, uh, in, the, in this NFT collection across time, basically. And then what we can see is like, there has been a lot of sales like uh, in, the, in the first few days and now the collection is like slowing down. Um, then we, we have the moving average price over the last 50, 50 trades, so that's NMA, then 100 trades, N times 2, and so on and so on. And basically what we can see is that like the, the collection has been trending down in the, in the recent days and like the collection is trending up uh, over, over like a longer time horizon. So I don't know, if I was invested in this collection, I'd probably like still, still hold it out. Um, but what I wanted to uh, emphasize here so now you understand this chart. And like what's happening here is though um, that the ETH amount, like one, one NFT has been sold for, I think this is 15 ETH. And basically because of that, like you can't really tell what's happening in these lines too much. Like these, these lines, like because the, the scale of the whole, um, the whole chart basically gets distorted by this one sale. Um, I also give you the option to like only look at these, um, only look at the graphs, I think, or the lines, whatever. Um, these data points like in, in a single thing. So basically like you can see those, those lines that are here in this chart are also like, in, like these are exactly the same lines. It's just like you can much better like see, see how they're moving in this chart because we, uh, we scale the chart down to not display this, um, one freak sale of 15 ETH. So that's something you'll, you'll have to deal with sometimes if you're, uh, especially if you're uh, displaying individual data points, because it's like the outliers will really fuck up your charts basically. And uh, that can happen, uh, uh, like that can happen in volume, that can happen in like sales data, that can happen in, I don't know, people aping into pools. Like there's always like, you, you always need to find like a, a, a way to like display the data without, um, yeah, like, you need to be able to make out like the data uh, clearly with with your chart and like th like i've i found like especially if you change around collections like in this collection is actually reasonable but there's some collections where there's like the the moving average is like two and then like there was one sale for 100 and then it's like how the fuck are you gonna like make out these lines um so so that's basically the the problem that i'm that i'm solving here and then it's like, this is pretty much the same thing. The same thing. This is uh, sales and ETH. And instead of moving average prices, I've chosen statistical measures. Um, so basically, this, this is all the things that are usually complained, uh, contained in the box plot. Um, but for, for like the prices of an NFT collection. Um, and then you like same, same deal over here. Um, we actually take out the maximum and the individual uh, amounts here um so in order for us to be able to to like uh accurately or like closely observe the the the, the graphs that uh, get generated by this data and then it's like yeah okay so um i have price data and then i have um sales and eth um w with moving averages i should probably rename this chart actually um but uh yeah it is what it is now and then we have sales and eth statistical measures yeah, I should call this sales and ETH uh, moving averages, but whatever. Um, but yeah, then then we can clearly like uh, we can follow the sales data. Like we we have all the individual sales, we have moving averages, we have uh, statistical measures, 
Um, so let's say, for example, I only want to take a look at the minimum. So minimum, I don't know, like in NFT markets, like the floor is actually quite a common measurement. So we can see like, hey, the minimum sale in the last uh, 50 sales, that's what we selected up here, rolling trades, uh, has been 2.71. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what that tells you. Like I'm, I'm like not as deep in the NFT market at the moment. But basically, like you, you can really like make out these data points, and then you can look at first quartile and and so on and so on and so on. Um, so this basically like it gives you a perfect overview over the the price data in NFT markets. And like I always want you to think about like, hey, what do I want to communicate with this uh, section of my dashboard? And it's like clearly clearly split this, and then like clearly like try to try to like imagine like what do you want to communicate with this and then find the data points that are that are reasonable and then also like try to think about these things of like how how does this actually look like if we have extreme data points like can i read the graphs and then like find solutions like this one uh where where that isn't the case and what you can also see here um I may maybe going back to individual uh, visualizations is like I've actually like because this is prices in ETH like I've written here like prices in ETH because it's like what is this ten ten bananas like it, it's just like of course in the in the in the context of this dashboard this this makes total sense and it's even called sales in ETH so it's like yeah you could kind of make it out but it's just like it takes you like a fucking second to to like uh, to write this in here and it it might help like twenty percent of the people to better understand this chart so it's like. Why, why not why not just include it like real quick um so yeah i think yeah that's that's it that, that's all i can say for this section and then like i've pretty much done the same with volume data it's like i i display like volume in volume in eth and volume in us dollar um volume by individual sales um so this is actually a chart that i wouldn't be too happy about in in um in this specific format because it's like you you can't really make out like the individual uh whatever is happening here but then if we go down to a week or like i think a month we ran previously um then we can actually like hey like uh dude 467 so a dude is like one one of the items of the nft collection uh has been sold for 5.20 eth um, so, so in that way, like, like if you if you look at this on a lower scale time frame, um, or like, uh, yeah, whatever, um, a littler time frame, it's pretty hard to like, uh, yeah, my words are escaping me, but uh, basically, like on, on this time frame, it, it actually makes sense. Um, so, so just so that you can uh, see the thought process behind that, um, let's switch back to five years. There it is. Um, yeah, and basically, like here we have uh, classified volume. So, uh, in in which quartile of the price range has has this been traded? And so, like this this really goes down into the technical details of uh, of NFTs. And uh, we don't want to go there. We want to look at visualizations and and like dashboard design here. But basically, like um, I give you volume data, like clearly, like price data. Now we go to volume data, and then it's like. I give you volume in ETH, I give you volume by the individual sales. So a volume by the individual sales, it would be really interesting if like, um, if there would be like really big sales, like all of a sudden, then, then this would, this would like tell you a story basically. And like, or, or for example, like at the beginning of a collection, like these days are actually super bullish because that's like a distribution event. That means that like people have called on like, Hey, this is actually like a cool collection. And like, if the volume really spikes on 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 a day like this, and if a lot of individual pieces get transacted, that's basically that basically means like the the minters of the of the collection, like they they distribute their like they basically sell their NFTs, but in the, at the same time, like the the collection get dis gets distributed. And then if if there's like a few of these uh of these days in the collection, that's that's like a really good sign, I'd say. Um, but yeah, that's that's NFT uh, trading trading jargon now. So let's um, let's focus on the visualizations. <laughs> um, so again, volume in ETH. Uh, clearly, like uh, mark your uh, mark your stuff. Um, give it clear titles. Um, you you can actually like um, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, this comment here. So statistical measures are based on uh, last and trades parameter. Um, you can do this by um, going into your query, and then you can click on this uh, little pen and 
Then you can give it a title and also a description. So this description uh, will always appear in, in these charts. So if there is something that is kind of hard to explain, um, then you might want, or like kind of hard to understand, I guess. Um, or if you're working with parameters, then it's always like a good, a good thing to like include like a, a, a little description up here and, and just say like, hey, this, this is based on a, on a parameter. You can change that up there or something. Um, so yeah, what else is there to cover here? Um, hey, I wanted to hear more about um, why you chose last in trades instead of um, a time window. Oh man, that's that's quite a story. Um, yeah, we can we can quickly go over that, I guess. Um, we'll do it another time if you want to focus on visualization. It just sounded interesting. Yeah, it actually is really interesting. Uh, wait, let me let me collect my thoughts for a second. Can I? Do I have a quick explanation? Um, no, not not really. I'll uh, we we can we can have a we can have a other session about that. Um, I, I'll, I'll gladly talk about it, and I'm actually working on an article describing my, my, my thought process, but it's not finished yet, so kind of, kind of hard to uh, talk about it right now. Um, but yeah, um, let's, let's quickly finish this, finish this up, I guess. Um, daily unique sellers and buyers. Uh, so basically volume data, um, and in volume data, I also have daily unique buyers and sellers. That's a bit like, you could argue that this doesn't belong in here, um, but at the same time, it's like, uh, it, it actually like shows you how much like people are participating in the market. So, so that's quite interesting. Um, yeah, you, you, like uh, unique wallets, um, like always like label your access if something is not clear. And in this case, it's actually really not clear. So this is, this is really a lifesaver. Um, oh, actually it, it says here like unique sellers, unique buyers, but it's still nice to like, just like label your access, like. That's like if one thing you should do should take away here is like label your X's. And actually in this case, um, we have a chart which has two different uh, X's. So if we go in here real quick, we can actually take a look at this on a, on a deeper level. Um, so there is an option of like, um, uh, wait, maybe I can, uh, how to explain this correctly. Ah, so yeah. Uh, basically, what you what you see here is that like I have cumulated ETH volume and cumulated number of trades, but cumulated ETH volume like they shouldn't be on the same axis, right? Like, where is this chart actually? Uh, make it into like the visualization points are just missing here. This is pretty weird. Um. It's just not showing. Ah, wait, what? Wait, let's let's make a new visualization. As I, like, if something isn't working, just uh, just start new. Um, so I want the accumulated ETH volume, and I want this to be ah. You can actually mix chart types. I I guess that's that's something I can go into real quick. Um. So what we basically have here is like our query returns cumulated ETH volume and cumulated number of trades. And basically like it doesn't make sense to display these like on the, on the same, like in this, like in the same chart, it makes sense, but it's like, you need to choose like one axis on the left and one axis on the right. And one has to display the cumulated number of trades and one has to display the cumulated uh, volume. Um, so what we can do in, in Dune is like, we'll actually choose the right format first. And I want my ETH volume uh, uh, as an area, and then I will quickly, I don't want to, uh, I just want it to display this, or actually 0.0a. Uh, so yes, that makes sense, cumulated ETH volume. And, but I also want my cumulated number of trades. And now it's like, if we display this on the, on the same axis, then it's kind of like, it doesn't really feel right or like look right. It's, it's a bit, it's a bit of a weird thing to display this on the same axis. So what we'll do instead is we'll enable the right Y axis. And then we can choose here, like on, on which axis do I actually want these displayed? And I can just choose, Hey, I want this to, dis to be displayed on the, on the right, uh, 
y-axis and then we have a y-axis on the left and we have a y-axis on the right and then the chart actually makes sense and you can kind of read it. But now in this case, it actually is really, really relevant that you label your axis. So I'm just gonna quickly copy this over. Um, so the left x-axis is the accumulated ETH volume. So the right axis is the number of trades. And here I can uh, ETH uh, volume. So then we can see here, like on the right x-axis, we have the number of trades and on the left, we have the accumulated ETH volume. Um, and I think we as Dune could make a better job of, uh, of displaying like which, which number belongs to which uh, axis now, because it's like, if you just look at this from a glance, you could like, there's no clear way of like ascribing the the red line to the to the right axis and the le the the area to the left thing but if you if you start hovering over this like it immediately like you can see like um if i follow the line that gets generated when i hover and it like it goes to the left and shows uh close to 1k and i'm like close to 1k on the chart uh then it then it makes sense again but yeah that's something we could improve upon like but you can see how you can see how this works i guess um We'll just change the label format real quick. And I think you can't, can you change the label format individually? If I put a zero, dot zero here, does that, oh yeah, that actually works. That's cool. I thought that that was, uh, that was bugged out, but uh, it seems to work. Um, so for number of trades, there can't be like 0 0.5 trades. Um, so we'll display full numbers and for label format, um, for ETH, it actually makes sense to like display the like 1089.0 ETH have been traded. You could argue that it's like irrelevant here, but it's like, yeah, why not display it? Um, so yeah, I guess that's it for this chart. Uh, let me just... Um, yeah, is there, is there questions around like uh, right axis, uh, left axis? Have I explained this sufficiently? I would guess so. Um, so yeah, no, so then we are pretty much finished with the, with the volume data. We have the volume data in ETH. We have it by individual sales, by generalized classified volume, and so on and so on. Uh, daily unique buyers and sellers and cumulated sales volume. So basically that tells you like all about the activity or like the activity level that's happening inside of this NFT collection. So as you can see, like currently there's pretty much nothing happening in this NFT collection. And you can see there's no, no unique buyers and sellers and like the cumulated sales volume is like, it's really, uh, there, there, there really is nothing happening. So um, there, it's kind of in a, in, a, in a sleep state. And like, I don't know, like you, like, you interpret that data. Like I'm, I'm not the, I'm not the guy for that. Um, so then basically what's like, we have price data, then we have like volume data or activity data, and then we have holder data and holder data is basically like how many people have engaged with this NFT collection. And it's like, then we can look at current holders. Um, we can look at wallets that ever held the NFT. So it's like people, like people who once had the NFT, but then sold is also included in here. Um, so um, here is like the, the wallets and the daily change. Um, it, it just makes for, for a nice like uh, combination of visualizations. Um, so you can, you can clearly see that here. Again, labeling the, labeling the axis, um, labeling the axis again. Um, that's, that's all I can really say to that. And it's like uh, putting these, uh, like, uh, like I've, I've clearly chosen to like put them below each other because it's like, I, I think both of them, uh, merit merit like you can like easily complain uh compare compare these two to each other and yeah it, it just makes sense to like display them this way um then it's like token distributions over time this is actually a, a really interesting query i would say uh which basically shows you like from like uh green that, that's actually a really good example of like uh using colors to uh communicate something in your dashboard. So that's basically like there's this function in Excel where you can uh, color grade uh, numbers uh, based on 
like is it is it good for the company or is it bad for the company or for the project or whatever and basically that that's what the that's what the original author of this query uh, did as well um so basically here we have um like a dark green is like uh somebody only owns one nft um then a lighter green is like he owns two to five and then basically like the the colors get more I don't know, radiant or dangerous or like, I don't know, like in most cultures, those colors are perceived to be like green is pretty good and red is pretty shitty. And um, that, that's basically the color grading that the author of, of, of this query chose. And um, so basically like we can, we can clearly like see what's happening in this collection just by, just by looking at this. So what this, what, what this chart basically tells me now is like um, at the beginning, um, there was a lot of people who owned 6 to 25 NFTs. And then those people sold to people who initially bought this NFT. So you can see like the people who own one NFT or two NFTs uh, or two to five. Um, that number rises and, and this number decreases. But at the same time, it's also like people who own uh, 25 to 100. Uh, like I think somebody or multiple people really loaded up. No, it's, it's just one. So it's like... Uh, one wallet in this category owns 32 uh, because it's like yeah just from a calculation perspective there can't be two that own uh, more than 25 yeah but, but it's like whatever um so basically w what's happening in this collection like if, if you just look at it on a high level it's like um there was like a pretty good distribution at the beginning some some whale formed and this whale uh, is staying the whole time and uh what what's happening over the last i guess uh, two months it's like that the uh, existing holders, so the people who already have 6 to 25 of this, uh, they're actually buying more. And like it, there, there seem to be some weekends at the floor uh, or, or like at the like people who only had one of this NFT who, who lost conviction and like the, the numbers are slowly grinding, grinding down. And basically people who own uh, 2 to 5 are uh, pretty much unchanged. So it's like... Um, if if I would look at this like from a like investor's perspective, like it's actually like quite a healthy uh, thing to happen because it's like you can expect the people who own six to twenty five NFTs to be kind of like in touch with the project, and if they are buying more, uh, that's actually a good sign. And then it's like um, I think at the beginning it's really about distribution, but then as time uh, moves on, it's basically like um, how bullish are people on this NFT, and like are existing holders uh, selling or are they buying? And if they're buying, like that's actually a good sign. So that's that's my interpretation of that. But basically, like uh, with this color grading and like the way this this uh, chart is structured, you can really easily like uh, get information out of there. You know, uh, you see. Um, so yeah, really, I really really love this chart. Like um, it's my favorite chart on the dashboard by by far. Um, then we can also um, we can took, take a look at all NFT holders. So that basically tells you like. Um, it's basically like another way of displaying this, and uh, but instead of grouping, grouping them so um, broadly, um, we actually have all the all the different wallets here as like a, a, a separate color. So um, what you can do here is basically like um, if you just look at this like this, it actually doesn't tell you too much, I'd say. But um, if you like uh, start using the tooltips, then it's like okay, so I can kind of make out that I guess more than a quarter, forty. This should be like 35-40% um, own one NFT. Like that's that's the number of holders who own one NFT. Or like that's the amount of the collection that is owned by wallets who own one NFT. Man, that's a that's quite a sentence. Um and then um here we we, we somewhere here we get into the area of like people own two NFTs. And uh, from there on onwards, it's like half of the collection is basically owned by people who own more than two NFTs and one quarter of the collections even owned by people who own more than seven. So I don't know. You can like always make your own judgments from that. But yeah, actually, I, I wouldn't be able to interpret this too well. And uh, the current wallet, wallet distribution, I actually think I should totally like that's actually an example of like, what is this data supposed to tell me? Um, so I, I should really remove this um from this nft dashboard because it's like you want to like you are the curator of the information and it's like what the fuck is this telling me like this tells you that 202 wallets have one nft but it's like what kind of information would that convey and it's like two wallets uh or like wait no 
30, 34 wallets own two NFTs. But it's like, it's, it's really hard to like conceptualize what this information actually means. So this is actually like a really shitty chart. I should like 100% take this out here. Um, so, so I actually didn't do this in intention, but like I've had that thought in the back of my mind that like, I, I should probably like access for, for quite some time. And like, now that I'm trying to explain this, like it's 100% like evident that this is just bullshit. And, um, yeah, then, then like in the, in the end, I've basically like included a current NFT ownership table. And this is basically helpful if you just want to like, um, if you want to do like your real due diligence. So there's this one guy who owns 32 NFTs. So what we could now do is like, um, we could like go into his Zapper or his D-Bank. Uh, actually need to uh, open a private window so you guys don't see my Zapper stuff. Um, So we'll just, um, I've just copied his address and now I'm just opening his, uh, his Zepa stuff. And then I just go into the NFT, uh, slot. And if I see now this guy has millions and millions and millions of NFTs, which he probably has, um, then I, I'd be quite, there's no NFTs. Are you kidding me? Yeah, but this guy has 1.8 million. So it's like. He's, he's probably pretty unlikely to just uh, dump the NFTs on the market. So it's like, it, this, this would actually be all right. And that's, that's basically why I, have, uh, why, I, why I have included this uh, current owner table down here. So it's like, if you really want to, and if there's like big whales, um, you can actually track these. And what would be the ideal way, honestly, um, I think there's some dashboards which take parameters on dune which kind of replicate something that nansen is doing so basically like um auxiliary information about this owner and i should probably make this into a link to such a dashboard but i've not gone that far yet but that's basically like my my thought process be behind like uh constructing this whole dashboard and as you probably noticed like i'm i've like really done the research on this and like i i i I, I was able to explain to you like what like each of this chart like each of these charts means to me, and that's basically like what you need to be able to do in order to construct a great dashboard. It's like what's the story and like what's the information that I need and like how do I like effectively communicate this information, and um, that's really like that that's really like the thought process that you have to get into to like build great dashboards. And like, of course, like there's, there's stuff to improve here. I'm really unhappy about this long text, but like, there's no other way for me to do this because Dune is actually, um, there's no way for me to automate this. Like usually uh, what I would love to do is like, uh, I suggest setting the end to 10% of the collection, but, um, that's just not possible in SQL. Like I've, I've tried like a million fucking ways and it's just like, uh, SQL is not happy about variables at all because SQL, SQL is like a it's a database language, right? Like it's very good at like pulling data out, but it's not good at like, I don't know, working with variables and stuff like that. So uh, that, that really, really annoys me, but it is what it is. And I have to leave this text in here, but um, basically about the rest, like I, I could maybe like put even more like, like shorter description text in here um, so that people are better able to like get the flow of this dashboard. But I think it's doing a perfectly fine job. And um, yeah. Um, that, that's my, that's my whole thought process behind, uh, constructing dashboards. And I hope you could, uh, learn something from this. Is there questions, comments? Box up. Yes. Can 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 you guys see the the most viewed dashboards on June in terms of like yeah. the most popular uh, data points? Sure. Um, we are, we are actually working on a um, on a new uh, discover feature. So basically, like if you go into the discover now, like all we are showing you is like favorite data, right? And we are working on. Um, We'll, we'll not show you the, the actual numbers, but we'll basically like have a scale of like, Hey, this dashboard is trending right now. Like this is, this is uh, like, this is viewed a lot. And it's basically just going to be in the relation to the, to the other dashboards on Yun. Um, so we'll, we'll not show you like the total numbers, but, um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure to like, um, factor in views into the discovery thing. Cool. Shot.
Um, yeah, we, we are we are uh, actively thinking about uh, integrating Python or R um, for for sure. Like that's um, that's a that's a question I just got in the chat for lectures. So somebody's asking if we are uh, integrating Python or R, and um, yeah, we we are for sure thinking about this. We see that the community uh, could could need this, and uh, yeah, it's it's something we're looking into. It's it's gonna take a while. Um, there's other th other stuff we're we're doing right now, but yeah. Um, JavaScript, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't like. I don't know what you could do with JavaScript. Um, ah, okay. So like, ah, like you you want to bring your own visualizations? That would be interesting. Um, yeah, then definitely. Like we we're, we're looking to like um open up to more um like have APIs uh, every everything like that. We're like we're seeing that the demand is there, and um we we we're, we're like looking to build out our app and like our data platform, everything. Uh, it's just uh, engineers don't fall from the sky. This this is all pretty pretty tough to figure out, and uh, yeah, but um yeah, we we hear you, and uh, we'll we'll make sure that like uh. All of you get everything you need basically and it's like we've heard this these requests for python and r so often it's like yeah like we, we'll do it but it's like i can't really tell at what point is there any more questions comments Otherwise, talking for an hour is actually really exhausting. Um, I would call it quits for here. And maybe um, if, if somebody has specific questions, um, I'll, I can actually like, um, I, I, I would love to like help some of you like one on one or like in, in, a, in a smaller group to, to work th through some stuff. Um, so give me like 10, 10 minutes of cooldown and, and I'll be back like in the, in the horse stable or something. Maybe Andrew's time as well. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, we can go back and like um, go into like Etherscan tables and stuff. But yeah, if, if you guys are up for it, um, I'm, I'm definitely up for it. But uh, I, I, need to, I need to cool, cool down for, for a bit. All right. Thank you, Boxer. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, like happy, happy. Like if, like just like if somebody has a question, drop down into the horse table. I'll I'll be there in in like five minutes or something. Um, yeah, thanks guys for attending. I hope this was helpful and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.